All right, thanks for tuning in for the second part here. Let's take a look at how vectors can help us understand free fall acceleration. Free fall means falling under the influence of gravity only, without air resistance. So in this case, velocity increases by 9.81 meters per second each second. So we can write that as 9.81 meters per second square. Um, we often round this to 10 if we're doing just approximate calculations. And we call this value g for gravitational acceleration. So let's take a look at the person who drops this water balloon off the edge of a cliff. So time equals zero is when it's released. Initial velocity is zero because it's just being dropped. It's not being thrown down. Initial position is zero meters. How fast will this be going one second later? We're going to use the approximate value for g of 10. No, actually, let's use 9.8. Let's round this to 9.8. OK, so one second later, the velocity will be 9.8 meters per second. If we look at it one second later, it's going to be going twice as fast as this, 19.6 meters per second. And if you take a look at it after three seconds, it's going to be going 9.8 meters per second times three seconds which is 29.4 meters per second. And this should be meters per second squared. OK, so this is actually a pretty simple concept. Every second that something is falling, it will be going 9.8 meters per second faster than it was the second before. But what about this volleyball being hit by this volleyball player? If she hits that ball with an initial upward velocity of 30 meters per second, then how fast will that ball be moving up uh, one second later? So up here, the new velocity is going to be 30 minus, we're going to use 10 for this, 30 minus 10, which will be 20 meters per second. And if we go even further up here to the next second, after going up for two seconds, it will be 20 meters per second minus 10, which will be 10 meters per second. And finally, at the very top, it will reach um, zero velocity. It will come at rest um, moment for an instantaneous moment of time, a blip in time, shorter than you can snap your finger. So notice how this is the opposite, that when the ball was being dropped on the cliff, with each second, it gained about 10 meters per second of velocity, from 10 to 20, and from 20 to 30. But when something is going up, it's going to be losing 10 meters per second every second. So from 30 to 20, from 20 to 10, and from 10 to 0. What about when it begins to fall then? So it has an initial velocity of 0 at the top, but then it's falling. After falling for one second, it's going to have about 10 meters per second of speed. Having fallen another second, about 20 meters per second. And finally, when it gets back to the same height as the, as the player, it's going to be 30 meters per second. So these laws of physics have a lot of symmetry to them. Whatever happens on the way up happens in reverse on the way down. So let's take a look at these formulas over here on the side. There's a formula that we refer to as how fast. And it will be what is the change in speed for something given its rate of acceleration times the time it's accelerating for. So here, this acceleration we're talking about is g. So we can turn that a into a g for gravitational acceleration. 
Let's take a look at this example. A penny is dropped on a well and hits the water four seconds later. How fast is it going just before it hits the bottom? So we can use this equation. The change in speed that it will experience while accelerating is equal to its rate of acceleration times the time accelerating. We're talking gravitational acceleration, so let's make this A into a G. And let's use G equals 10 meters per second squared because we're just trying to get some approximate calculation here. So 10 meters per second squared times 4 seconds will give a speed of 40 meters per second. So this is the change in speed. So we could, just to be more clear, if it started with an initial speed of zero because it was dropped, not thrown, then whatever speed is whatever change in speed there is will be what you speed you end up at. In other words, 0 plus 40 will equal 40 meters per second, where this was our V initial. Okay, so that's a pretty straightforward concept too, especially after our study of acceleration. And practice 2A is very similar. Now, we're going to take a look at the how far formula. How can we determine how far something has gone while it's accelerating? And so I'm going to switch over to red for this. So this equation here, delta x, the change in position equals one half times the rate of accelerating times the time accelerating squared. So let's take a look at the example again. How far does it drop? So we can say delta x and that equals one half times rate of acceleration times time accelerating squared. And we can make the A into a G. So let's just make that A into a G. And let's use 10 rather than 9.8. Just kind of keeps things simpler for now. 10 meters per second squared times a time of four seconds squared. Now, we have to evaluate this. Remember your orders of operation. Do your squaring first. 4 squared is 16 times 10 times 1 half. So let's take half of 16, which is 8, then multiply times 10, and we get 80. What are the units going to be? We're talking about how far the units are going to be meters. And we can also see how these units end up canceling out because this is second square divided by seconds which is being squared so these units cancel out. Alright, I would like for you to try the practice right below here about the water balloon. So try A, B, and C, and D, and E. Alright? Um, I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll help you get set up on E. So let's go back over to the, the ball being dropped off the cliff. And I actually already gave you a pretty good head start over here. X equals 1 half G delta T square. So let's use 10 for G, 10 meters per second square. The time is 1 second. Evaluate it. You get 1 half times 10 times 1 square, which is 1, which is just going to be 5 meters. Okay, so scholars, finish this up, and we're going to be working with this concept tomorrow. So you will have, I think, a lot of time tomorrow to get clarification from your group members, from myself, to make sure that you feel comfortable in your understanding of free fall. Um, Okay, see you tomorrow.